Despite hawkish rhetoric from politicians, European businesses are taking a more cautious approach, warning that EU itself has plenty to lose from sanctions. Now, Russia is the European Union's third largest trade partner. Nearly half of the cars made in the EU end up in Russia, as does 18% of the bloc's chemical production. Plus, European consumers get one-third of their natural gas supplies from Gazprom. And then there's a huge profit from food exports to Moscow. But that's only half of the story. Russia's contribution to the global economy as a whole is not to be underestimated. Take metals, for instance. 20% of the world's titanium comes from Russia, a metal used in, in industries from aviation to jewelry. And nearly half of the world's uh, palladium, which makes your car greener, is mined in Russia. Then there's a massive uh, Russian contribution to platinum, diamonds and many other minerals. So any disruption in the supply of those commodities is bound to reverberate across the global economy. Now, the EU and the U.S. have refused to accept the results of the independence vote in Crimea, claiming the ballot was unconstitutional and orchestrated by Russia. For more, we're now joined live by Gerald Salente, who is a publisher of Trend Journal, who joins us live. Thank you very much, sir. You're live on RT International. Now, are these sanctions uh, against Russia retribution pure and simple, or is there more to them? I think the word sanctions is the wrong word. They mean, really mean nothing, especially considering the threats that have been made over the last few weeks about the tough sanctions that were going to be imposed. So the word sanctions really is not appropriate. Uh, this is just a slap on the wrist to a couple of people that most people don't know who they are, nor is their influence far-reaching. And it's nothing as we see it in analyzing it, expecting much more from what was coming from Chancellor Merkel, from uh, Prime Minister Cameron and President Obama and Secretary of State Kerry that this is really nothing more than propaganda because it's really not affecting anything. And if there were sanctions, it would have really encompassed what you were just talking about, how really integrated the Russian economy is with the European Union. President Obama uh, said that the U.S. is ready to impose more uh, f or further costs, so to put it. As you mentioned before, that maybe these sanctions are not as, you know, impacting as they would like them to be. So if that indeed did happen, where more sanctions were imposed, well, how do you think Russia will respond to that? And if so, what? Well, you know, it's difficult to say how they respond. Again, when you're looking at the European Union... And the point that you made about how everything is now so much more integrated and all the years of building it up to have more trade with Russia and how energy dependent the, the Europeans are on Russia. And it would take several years to bring down that energy dependence, even if the United States started exporting massive amounts of natural gas and other energy. So if they were to impose sanctions, that those kind of trade... Uh, essentials would all break down. And again, this is one more time that President Obama is painting an invisible red line. He talks about the red line, but then when he paints it or draws it, it comes up empty. I, I really mean this. The word sanctions is inappropriate considering what sanctions really mean. This is nothing more than a make-believe expression by the United States, Europe, EU, some of the members, on looking tough when they're really doing nothing. It's toothless. The sanctions are toothless. Okay, let me bring you back to the referendum that just happened on Sunday in Crimea. Uh, the Crimean people have spoken out, so why does Washington and Brussels refuse to actually recognize that the people have voted and they want to break away from Ukraine? You know, I don't know the reason why, but being someone in the States and watching this, you would think that the elections were held under a barrel of a gun. And it's more of a demonization of Russia uh, with the American people. Actually, you saw it happening with the Sochi Olympics. And it's also that the really the prize as well is on more of Ukraine 
and it gives the United States and Europe using the Crimean situation as an excuse that we have to get tough and we have to stand our ground. And we and look, listen to uh, Senator McCain talking about armaments and weapons to the Ukraine government, which of course is an illegitimate government. So they're using that as more as a foundation to build under propping up the Ukraine government. General Salento, the publisher of the Trends Journal, giving us his thoughts on this geopolitical uh, situation that is happening in Ukraine.